So I haven't got my hair cut yet, but I will. It's coming this Friday. Yeah, it's getting a little further out of control and I kind of love it, but it's getting in the way. So here we go. Let's talk about this lap. So what I want to talk about is something called two-handed control. Yeah, uh, sometimes we call it, well, there's another level of two-handed control. That's two hands, no tie down, which is pretty cool. So I'll just kind of briefly talk about that, but just let me just throw this at you first. What we're going to do is we're going to have a situation where there's an operator that's a stamping process. It's a stamping process and the stamp goes bang, 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 right? So the operator comes up, he puts his hands into an area where there are these buttons. He presses two buttons and then when he does that, a clamp comes out and clamps onto something. And then a cylinder comes down and goes bang, 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 several times, okay? So that's like the stamping process, right? So you don't want your operator to put his hands in there. I mean, generally it's not good because your hands get smashed, right? So you actually put two buttons there, but he's got his two hands in there and there's no way he can stick his one hand in the machine. Now, there's also something called two hands, no tie down, which is pretty cool. That's not part of this lab, but I thought I'll unpack that just for a second. Now that is actually timing. What actually happens is that someone created two hands, no tie down, because what operators were doing was they were actually tying down one of the buttons. Yeah, they're actually just taking one of those of the two hands where they put their hands and they're actually putting like tape on and tying down one of the buttons. And then they can actually activate the machine quickly with one hand and it made the process more quick. So they could do their, their job. They could actually produce more parts. So they can take their part with one hand, stick it in the machine, press the button and bang, 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 pull it out, throw it out, grab another part, put it in, press the button, bang, 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 as opposed to putting it in, then taking their hand, putting it in here, putting two hands, they've tied one down. So there's something called two hands, no tie down. And that's actually where we put a timer in between the two buttons. So essentially you have to put a timer that says, if this button and this button are both pressed within the same second, with the same half a second, then go ahead and you know make the machine work. But if this button and this button are pressed within outside of a maybe a two second window or a one second window, then don't start the machine. That's two hands, no tie down. This lab is just about like operating a machine with two hands. So we're gonna have a pneumatic actuator that is the stamp that's coming up. So let's actually look at the lab worksheet. So go through this, it's, it's not a big deal. Here are all the, the, the pieces and equipment. The only thing I'm gonna highlight that's actually a little bit different is two inline metering valves. Yeah, this is the first time we're gonna be using metering valves in the labs. Metering valves, as you remember from lecture, yeah, they control the speed of a pneumatic cylinder and we always meter out, because you remember that, right? Yeah, okay. So here we go. Here's the process description. So I pretty much just described that to you, but I'll just unpack it a little bit more like control statement. So what's going on is that the operator goes and puts two hands in, make sure that both buttons are pressed. Then a clamp comes out and I'm calling the clamp in this case, cylinder C. And then the stamp goes repeatedly, bang, 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 up and down and up and down and up and down. Now that is going to be cylinder S for stamp. When the operator takes his hands outside or stops pressing actually either button, then what's gonna happen is the stamp will stop stamping, but the clamp will actually stay clamped. For the operator to release the clamp, because the clamp's clamping onto the part, right? He has to press the stop button. There you go. So essentially, here's the ladder logic. So hook this all up, and I think, you know, you guys just hook this up, but the one thing I have to stop and highlight is this. Let's just take a look at this. Okay, here we go. I've got some non-return throttle valves here, which are metering valves. I'm using them as metering valves. And as you know, we always meter out, right? So we're throttling the air coming out of a cylinder. So when this cylinder is an extension, the air from the cylinder will come into this valve and it will see this check valve. It will stop. It'll be like, I can't go through there. What do I do? I'm forced to go through this throttle valve. So it's gonna throttle the air coming out and the cylinder will slow down. So essentially this stamp is not going at like, like ballistic speeds. It's just going kind of stamping a little bit like this, like this speed as opposed to going bang, 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 right? So we're gonna damage maybe our cylinder, but more specifically in the lab, if your cylinder is like going freaking out, like it's gonna damage the cylinder. So I want you to put metering in there, okay? So now let's take a look at the 
option of the retraction. So the air is going to come up through here. It's going to get to here. It's going to see this throttle valve. It's going to be like, dude, I don't want to go through this throttle valve. Oh, look, there's a check valve here that can be wide open. I'm just going to go through the check valve, bypass this throttle valve. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to retract the cylinder and the air coming out of the cylinder will be forced to go through this throttle valve because when it sees this check valve, it says, oh, I can't go that way. So now we're we're throttling the air coming out which is again metering out i'm controlling the speed in extension and retraction um there you go so put these in these are in line okay so they're just actually these inline things that you'll find that you actually stick into the the line and they look like this although this isn't the exact one from the lab but essentially this is a non-return throttle valve it has a check valve in it and a throttle valve and it's configured in that way so this is an inline valve and you just stick it in in line with your cylinders that are um going from the hoses that are go from your dcv to your cylinders there you go now as far as um the homework goes what i want you to do is i want you to think about how you can add this description into the control so we're adding a, maybe a little bit of safety and that is specifically stopping the stamping cylinder in its tracks now as you know a DCV is either sending air to make the cylinder extend or sending air to make the cylinder retract. So it's always in retraction or always in extension. So what do we do to like stop it in its tracks? Well, you use a different kind of valve and I'm not going to tell you what kind of valve that is. There may be a hint there. Yeah. So essentially what I want you to do is just, just make one change to your automation studio drawing. Okay, we don't have these valves in the lab, so you're not going to do this for the lab. But for your automation studio drawing, I want you to make one change to the circuit so that when the operator releases either one button or the other, that cylinder stops in its tracks. And that's all. So have fun with this lab. So I haven't got my hair cut yet, but I'm getting there. I'm an appointment Friday. So let's take a look. I'm doing a video. You weren't talking to me. Well, no. Okay. But I mean, you're still, you know, you're still involved. So I haven't got my hair cut yet, okay. but I will. <laughs> just, yeah, stop. Okay, <laughs> yeah, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <sighs> okay, no, start again. Start again. Start again, start again. God, I was just about to start again, and then, <laughs> then you said start again. <laughs> I was just about to get my hair cut. No, I wasn't just about to. <laughs>